Hi, and welcome back. We are on EDM 5.6. And today what we're going to do is focus on the multiplication of fractions and whole numbers. Now, how we're going to also do that is to look at some function machines. So you are going to need math journal on page 169. So let's go ahead and look at the top of this page here and our math message. It says in problems one and two, use the rules to complete the tables. Then look carefully at your answers and talk with the partner about what you notice. So of course you're my partner in this. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at our function machine. So our rule would be to multiply by one fifth. So we're gonna put this number in, we're gonna multiply it by one fifth and we're going to get our answer. So if we do this, one fifth of 15 would be, well, that's 15 fifths, and that would give us how much? What is 15 divided by three? I mean, five. <laughs> yeah, it is three. So we would get three as our answer. Good. Now you will notice that I put the one fifth first. Could I put it second? Yeah, I could. It doesn't really matter. See, I'll show you with the next one. So if we do times one fifth, so 20, let's do that one first, times one fifth. Same thing, I would just put the one underneath the 20 and then once again, just multiply across, you would get the same answer. So if we did 20 times one, that would give us 20, one times five would be five, so 20 divided by five, yep, would be four. So our answer would be four, good. All right, so let's do this. We have 35 times one fifth. I'm gonna put the one underneath that. We're gonna multiply across. So we have 35 over five. So our answer is seven. Yeah, getting really fast with this, aren't you? All right, and I'm gonna do it this way. One fifth of 10, good. And I'm gonna put that under one. So one times 10 would be 10. And one, five times one would be five. So 10 divided by five would be two. Good. All right. So we've got our answer for our first table. Let's go ahead and look at number two. So the only thing we have to do here is just divide by five. So let's look at that. 15 divided by five is three. Good. 20 divided by five is four. 35 divided by five, seven. Good and 10 divided by five. Yeah, two, good. All right, so that you guys did that really fast. Okay, so now it says look carefully at your answers and talk with the partner about what you notice. So what do you notice between the two tables? Yeah, the answers are exactly the same. So how did that happen? Because here I was multiplying by one fifth and here I was divided by five. So how did that work? How did I get the same answer? Yeah, okay, so one of the things that I'm thinking about here is with here, I was dividing by five. So here, am I also dividing by five? Ah, okay, so what we're thinking is maybe we were dividing by five still, and we only needed one of those answers. So we're kind of thinking of our previous lesson. We only need one of those. So if I needed two fists, maybe I would have to double that. Yeah, okay, I'm, I'm getting it. Okay, so here, if I was dividing by five, here I'm essentially dividing by five as well, and I only need one of those answers, so I only need it one time. Good. Okay, so if we're thinking about this, let's go ahead and look at the bottom here. So it says use the rule to fill in the missing out numbers. So let's think about this. So Let's think of, is it does this work all the time? So let's see, if I divide here, if I'm looking at this, I wonder what would happen. Okay, so let's just try it. Let's do what we're used to, okay? So we went 15 is going in and I have to multiply by three fifths. So let's try that. So if I have 15 and I multiply that by three fifths, okay, so I'm gonna put that over my one like I've been doing. So. We have 15 times three is what? Yes, okay, so that would be 45, right? And then one times five would be five. And what is 45 divided by five? Mm-hmm, that would be nine. So I know my answer is nine. Okay, all right, three-fifths of 20. So let's try three-fifths of 20. Let's work that out. So we know that 
3 times 20 is what? 60, good. And we know that 5 times 1 is 5, good. And so let's think, what is 60 divided by 5? That's one of the ones that we know. If you're not sure, we know that 5 times 10 would be 50, so it has to be more than 10. 5 times 11 would be 55, so 5 more, so that would be 12 then, good. So 60 divided by 5 would be 12, nice. Okay, so, so far you're doing really good. Now remember, you could also do 1 fifth and then take 3 of those to figure it out, right? Okay, so let's try 35. So we have 3 fifths of 35. Okay, so 35 over 1. So let's try this. So we have 3 times 35. Now can you do that in your head? Okay, so if we're having trouble doing that in our head, what we can do is just kind of take it down to the side here where we have a little bit of room and we can just work that out. 35 times 3. Okay, so 3 times 5, that would be 15. And 3 times 3 would be 9, plus 1 would be 10. So we have 105. Wow, we're working with a big number here. And we need to then, 5 times 1 would be 5, divide that by 5. So, well, let's see. Well, we know that 5 goes into 10 how many times? That would be 2. Okay. And then 5 goes into 5 one time. So we would end up getting 21 there as our answer. Good. All right, so we got some big numbers here, but you guys are doing really great. Okay, so we have 10. So 3 fifths of 10. So that would be 30. And we have 5, so we end up with what is 30 divided by 5? Yeah, 6. Okay, good. It brought us back down, so we weren't dealing with as big of a number there. Okay, so let's see what we're doing here. Um, here, what it wants us to do is to use the rule to fill in the missing out number. So the first thing it wants us to do is take this number, multiply it by 3, and to divide it by 5. Wait a minute. Isn't that what I was doing here? Wasn't I multiplying it by 3? I got my answer. And then didn't I divide it by 5? I did. I did. I know I did. So the first thing I did was I took this and guess what? I have the same exact numbers. I have 15, 20, 35, 10, and I'm doing the same thing, aren't I? Because the first thing I did here was I multiplied by 3 and I divided by 5 because I did 15 times 3, got that answer, which was 45. Then I divided it by 5 every time. So if I'm looking at this, does this then just mean multiply by 3, divide by 5, which would be the same as this? Yeah, okay. So I know the answer is 9 here. I know that this is going to be 12. I know this is going to be 21. I know this is going to be 6 because it's the same exact thing I was doing right here. Because 15 times 3 is 45, divided by 5 is 9. 20 times 3 is 60 divided by 5 is 12. I've already solved these. So if I'm looking at these fractions, essentially when I'm looking at it, I can just think, well, I can just multiply by the top and then divide by the bottom number, which makes that really easy. Okay, so let's think about the bottom here. It says, think of a fraction of a problem. Okay, so it says, in your own words, describe two strategies you know from multiplying fractions by a whole number. So one of the strategies we used was this strategy, right? So first we would put the whole number over one, right? And then we multiplied it by the fraction and we multiplied across and we got our answer. So um, first um, put, the, put a one under the whole number then multiply so then what we did was we multiplied across then multiply across and then what did we do after we multiplied across we had to divide last divide good so the one of the things that we did was we used this strategy when we use this strategy the first thing we did was take this whole number put it over one 
we multiplied it by the fraction, we just multiplied across, and then we ended up dividing by that bottom number. So another strategy we're doing is we realize that all we have to do is take that whole number, multiply it by the top number, divide it by the bottom number, and we have our answer. So first, take the whole number, first take the whole number and multiply it by the, and I said top number, because right, what is the top number called though in a fraction? Numerator, so first take the whole number and multiply it by the numerator. Okay, and then do what? Then divide that answer by the bottom number, right? Because we would multiply by the top number and we divided by the bottom number. And what is that bottom number called in a fraction? Yep, denominator. Yes, definitely. Okay, so if we first take the whole number, multiply it by the numerator, and then divide that answer by the denominator, we would get our answer. Now, I have a question. Should we always multiply first and then divide? Do you think it would make a difference if we divided first and then multiplied? Hmm, that's interesting. Let's think about this. You wanna try it? Let's try it and figure it out, okay. So if I take 10, okay, and I multiply it by three, that would give me what? 30, good. And if I take 30 and divide it by six, I would get a five, I would get what? Six, good, okay. So if I take the 10 divide, times it by three, that would be 30. 30 divided by five, that would give me six. Now let's do it opposite and see what happens. If I take 10 and I divide it by five first, Okay, so 10 divided by five would be two, and then I multiplied it. Yeah, two times three is six. Guess what? I think it would work either way. So if I'm looking at this, I can either multiply by the top, then divide by the bottom, or I can divide by the bottom, then multiply by the top, but you always have to multiply by the numerator and divide by the denominator. But it really honestly doesn't matter what order you do it in. Um, is so, as just as long as you multiply by the top and divide by the bottom, okay? So one way that I kind of remember that is divide by denominator. Both of those start with the letter D. Divide, denominator, always divide by the denominator and multiply by the top, and you'll end up getting the same answer. All right, you did a fabulous job and you made really good connections today, so I will see you again in our next lesson. Thank you.